This is the second installment of a star project on the law. We saw in part A that we are free from the law by the body of Christ and that love fulfills the law. What I want to do is get into that just a little bit more. And I would ask you, if you like what you're hearing, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let us know what you're thinking. So the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 13, that love is a fulfillment of the law. And I want to explain how that is. The first verse that I want you to look at, it's found in Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. The law is spiritual. What, do, what does he mean, the law is spiritual? Well, throughout the Bible, spirit and mind are synonymous. So when something is spiritual, it's of the mind. That would just be another way of, of saying it. It's of the mind. What do you mean of the mind? I want to give you a couple of examples that Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 5. Verse 21, you have heard that it was said by them of old, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire, and that word hell right there is Guiana. Another one in verse 27. You have heard that it was said by them of old, Thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now what are we seeing here? We're seeing this outward action of murder. Jesus says, that means don't get angry. He just took this physical, literal murder and put it within the mind. If you don't even get angry, you'll never commit murder. The same with the adultery. You've been told not to commit adultery. I tell you, don't even lust in your heart. He took that outward action and put it within the human heart. Again, Paul says the law is spiritual. And I have learned to recognize that we can take all of this law and put it inward. Now, if I am angry, or if I am considering murder, or considering adultery, and he says, well, don't even get angry, how do you do that? How do you prevent the anger from happening? Remember, thoughts produce feelings, feelings move you to action. So if you can change that thought, if you can change the thought that makes you feel angry, you will not follow through and commit murder. If you can change that thought that's causing you to lust, if you can change that thought, you will not follow through with adultery. Jesus Christ died to redeem us from all iniquity. The thought 
that leads to the anger to the murder. That thought is iniquity. That thought that leads you to lust and commit adultery. That thought is iniquity. And the question is, how does Christ's death redeem me from iniquity? Because you say, by changing that thought, I would act in love toward my enemy. By changing that thought, instead of committing adultery, I would be able to act in love toward that person, toward my wife. It is the thought that needs to be changed. And it is an awareness of love, walking in love, that will, will prevent you from sin. When we see Christ on the cross, and we're aware of the fact, Paul said, he, he that knew no sin was made to be sin, so that we might be made the righteousness of God. How was he made sin? Remember, the man didn't sin. He never sinned. Well, how was he made to be sin? How do you take somebody who hasn't sinned and say, well, they're, say they're made to be sin? Well, he portrayed on that cross the outward picture of the inward truth of all of humanity. Christ's crown of thorns was a symbol of our guilt. Those things that prick your mind. You think about it later and it bothers you. You can't hardly go there. Think of what you've done. The stripes on his back was a symbol of things that have been told us, ways that we have been hurt that we're just not able to let it go. We're not able to forgive. The stripes on his back were not what we deserve. It's what has already happened to all of us. The pain caused by other people. The nakedness is when you expose yourself with your own anger, your own lust, your own ideas. And the darkness that happened, the land was dark, the sun was blotted out is a symbol of our lack of understanding of God. God is light. When you're in darkness, you don't know God. And that is what you're seeing Christ portraying on the cross. Christ had no guilt, but he's wearing a crown of thorns. He forgave everybody. Remember, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yet, the stripes on his back were a symbol of ire, unwillingness to do that. His nakedness, the darkness, it all portrayed humanity without a knowledge of God. So if we're standing at that cross, we see ourselves. We see what we have done to others, the crown of thorns, the guilt and what others have done to us, the stripes on the back. And we realize that God completely understands us. And just like Christ said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We can receive that true. We can receive that too. When we did what we did, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't understand it. No different than the soldiers who were killing him. They were all forgiven by Christ. If he can forgive them, he can forgive us. And if he has forgiven us, he has forgiven all of us. So my anger I'm carrying toward people who have hurt me, I can let that go and love them. 
And once I realize that I am forgiven, that we are forgiven, then I can realize that those problems that you have had in your life from the guilt and the stripes, I don't need to cause any more of it. See, I can look at the cross and I can see God forgiving me. I can see God forgiving you. And I can also see the things I have caused when I have said what I've said to you, when I've done what I've done to you. And I can realize I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to cause any more pain. I don't want to hurt you anymore. By means of the cross, when he died, the husband died and set the wife free. But he also gives you a new covenant. And that new covenant will allow you to know him and live according to his will. He will give you a new spirit and you can live according to the will of God. God is love. Love does not make a record of sin. And we are free to live in a freedom from iniquity.